Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 14 as well as Philippians 4 verse 16. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for this word. Thank you for all of the gold, silver, and precious stones contained in Jesus name. Lord God, let us be bearers of much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, let's get started. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. All right, and so this work that he's talking about um, is just talking about the work that we do as Christians, right? Um, as workers of the Lord, we are the children of the Lord. We are the heirs. We have been engrafted into the family and there is a set path that the Holy Spirit um, knows about that the Lord has created for us, his will, the will of the father. And we are to walk it out, right? We're to we're supposed to um, go forth and complete the will of the father using the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And as we do these things, we are working for the Lord. And it says that if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. And this is talking about the Bema Seat judgment, right? Um, so if you receive Christ into your heart, you're no longer going to um, be a part of the the great white throne judgment but the bema seat judgment should be your judgment so it's where all of your works are judged and so it's it's judged to see if um your works are made of gold silver precious stones or wood hay and straw right and so um whatever is is left after the fire um, this is what is will last, right? This is the work that you've done for Christ that will last. And so it says that if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, meaning survives the fire, um, and and if it's if the if the fire does not cause it to burn up and burn away, then it was done with right motives. It was done with um with um, precision and detail that the um, Lord would want. And so it says he will receive a reward. And so um, building on that foundation, remember that foundation is Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is the cornerstone of the foundation and the foundation is made up of the apostles and prophets. And so everything that we do should be built upon that, right? Which is the word of God. And so we will build upon that foundation and whatever survives the fire will receive a reward. All right. And so it says, let's read it all together again. First Corinthians chapter three, verse four. This is all, that's all the book of Ephesians. If you would like to do a study on that, there's actually a study already on the channel from the very beginning. Um, and so it says, if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. All right. And so this is conflated today with Philippians 4, verse 16. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. All right. And so this is Paul talking to the church of Philippi. And, um, you know, remember the Philippians were the ones that um, actually um, were spared the trial that was coming upon the whole earth. Right. What they, they represented the church that would be spared, according to the book of Revelation, chapter three. Yeah. Chapter three, somewhere around in there. And so, um uh, if you look at their, um, some of the things that they did, it's, it's interesting because they didn't have a lot, but they, but what they had didn't basically wouldn't have been burnt up. Right. So it says, um, I wrote down, um, for the first Corinthians completion portion, 
each one's work will become manifest. That That's the, um, I want to say that's like verse 13, just before the actual completion scripture, it says each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done, right? And so this Philippians 4.16 is saying that basically when Paul was um, out and he was in Thessalonica, he was in need, right? And he's saying that they sent him aid. So they sent him help. They showed concern. They showed compassion. And these are things that um, are produced when we are producing the fruit of the spirit, right? Um, are, are you fruitful? Do you do the things in the will of the Father? If the Father is asking you to do something or plant a seed somewhere, are you doing it? Um, are you looking out for the will um, of the Father? And are you listening for the voice of the Holy Spirit? Are you looking for areas of need where the Lord is telling you to go to and address, right? These are things that are are going to be judged as our actions and our deeds um, at the beam of seat judgment. And so um, these are the things that will receive rewards. Remember, we're not talking about salvation. We're talking about rewards that will be in heaven. And so um, it says, you sent me aid more than once. And so, you know, God saw every single time that they sent him aid. God took note of it. Remember, we serve a prudent God, a God who is an excellent record keeper. Um, if you look at um, verse 17, it actually says, not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account, right? And so, because God is the one who's keeping up with the account, God is the one who at the Bema seat, he's going to have a list of every good deed that you've done, everything that, you know, you've done throughout your whole entire life. And before you quickly say, oh, well, I've given to the poor, I've done this, I've done that. Make sure that when you did do that, it was of good motive. It wasn't to glorify you as well as, you know, there is no, you know, minimum or maximum right? You need to do it as much as you can do it for the Lord, right? As much as the Holy Spirit is leading you. So um, just remember, it is going to be a wonderful reward that you're going to receive. That's going to last you throughout eternity. These are going to be things that you want to have. And so it says, not that I desire your gifts, right? Paul was not saying that he wanted their gifts. He wanted their money. No, he was in need of aid. But more than that, he wanted for, for them to have something in their account when they get to heaven. He wanted them to be able to, to stand before the beam of seat and not have, and, you know, not have everything burn up, right? He, to have something left, a reward, something that is, is as gold, silver, and precious stones. So... Um, it says, for even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me a more than once when I was in need. Address the needs of others, right? If you see, and I'm not just talking about frivolous needs, right? I'm talking about the needs of people that are real. Um, there are so many ways to give aid, right? And in this day and age, it can be overwhelming the amount of areas that you can give into but just remember it doesn't it the the thing that matters is following the voice of the holy spirit as you go along right that's the maximum that is how you and going out of your way to try to give right but but the, the, the biggest part is following the 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 function of the holy spirit if you have it on your heart that you want to give more tell the holy spirit that right? He's going to show you more and more opportunities, right? He's going to show you the best way to maximize your, your gift giving and, 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 and as far as to your account in heaven, he's going to show you those things, right? Remember when I, um, I actually, I think I've told you guys this before. Um, one day I was, uh, headed home and the Lord told me to stop by, uh, goodwill because he had a gift for me and so I went to the goodwill and I'm looking everywhere and I see something and I'm like oh well maybe this is the gift and then I 
keep going and I saw a book um um and it was it was a book I can't think of the man's name now of course yeah but it's it talked about the rewards of heaven it's by the man who wrote the prayer of Jabez and so it's a very tiny book it is just a small book about the rewards of heaven and um how the system of currency basically works in heaven um as far as the bible is concerned and and receiving rewards and so yeah that was what i got and i um i'm i'm so grateful for that book because it really does help to know that you know god sees and he knows the sacrifices that you make and they will be rewarded right Hopefully they're done with good motive and they're done in a good heart and in love for the Lord, as well as, you know, the knowledge of the word. So, all right, you guys, let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Lord Jesus, help us to maximize our profitability on this earth and bring you great, great glory. Lord God, let our lives be fruitful for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I can be saved. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Sit on the throne of my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth meaning he's going to show you the way he's going to show you the will of the father for your life. And he is just a wonderful God and teacher. If you're having any problems with hearing the voice of the Holy spirit, then the best way to do it is to just sit down with the word, read the word, and then ask him questions, learn how to sit and wait and be quiet and wait for an answer. And then you'll begin to understand and know that still small voice of the Holy spirit. So um, go out, be baptized, find a church home, um, be around other believers as well, so that you can stay sharpened in the word of God. And then also go out and make disciples of all men. Jesus is with you at all times and you have a wonderful journey ahead. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children's peace. Take care.